Stephen, I would pay money to listen to your analysis of dodgeball <laughs> or stone skipping or arm wrestling. Which most intrigues you? Well, listen, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, all of it at this particular moment in time, obviously, we're dealing with very trying times. There's no denying that. There's no way to get around that. Uh, but the flip side to it is that, you know what, all week long on First Take on ESPN, we've been talking a lot about NFL free agency. Let's not forget that NFL is king. Uh, right now, it's free agency. You were wondering about where Tom Brady was going to go, what he was going to sign for. Uh, the Drew Brees of the world signed an extension. Todd Gurley getting let go by the Los Angeles Rams, ultimately signing with the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons, the list goes on and on. So you've got NFL free agency in terms of your respective teams and what they're going to do to improve. You've got the NFL draft uh, coming up as well. And obviously, when you're talking about going back and forth with commentary, pundancy, and what have you, uh, there's a lot of opinions that are out there about a lot of different things. Uh, whether it's the NBA, it's the NFL, or what have you, there's usually something to talk about. Clearly, we're compromised to some degree uh, because the games are not going on right now because of the suspensions uh, by the league and what have you. But nevertheless, there's still been a lot of content to engage in and to uh, banter back and forth about. That's what we've been doing. And to be quite honest with you, that's what we, we plan on continuing to do. You mentioned the NBA. Is it, is it feasible? Is it possible that if we can get through this, that they could restart, jumpstart that league as late as June? Well, it's possible. I mean, the, me personally, you have to remember, there were recently reports out there, uh, one of the owners for the Atlanta Hawks, before any of this had transpired, had, had made the proposal that the NBA should consider starting their season in December and going through the month of July, uh, you know, through half the summer. They thought that the league should start a little bit later and end a little bit later. And it was something that Commissioner Adam Silver certainly was considering. I'm not trying to say that it was imminent in any in any way, but it's definitely something that intrigued a lot of folks in the NBA community. And now, lo and behold, it's on the verge of potentially happening, assuming that a season is, is, is able to be resumed. Uh, unfortunately, you've got to get through this crisis first. Obviously, it's ravaged the sports world. There's no denying that. But speaking to owners uh, throughout the league on several occasions, as well as executives, they have not given up hope that, indeed, there will be an NBA season. They still obviously consider it a 50-50 proposition. Uh, but in the end, if you are somehow, some way able to restart the season or rather continue the season on in late May or early June, who knows? You could go into some. You could have a playoffs in July. You could have a season uh, where the champion is, uh, is established or crowned. Uh, by the beginning or middle of August. All of those possibilities are still out there. It's not necessarily pie in the sky, although it might seem that way at this particular moment in time. But there's a lot of people in the sports world that are holding out hope. But of course, as Commissioner Silver told ESPN's very own Rachel Nichols, you know what, they're working with health officials and obviously they're following their lead um, along with the federal government and what have you. And we'll see what transpires from there. Stephen, I can understand the Japanese not wanting to fold the tent on the prospect of a summer games, but how likely is it that that really could go forward? Well, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I really don't know because you know we don't have to. I don't have to deal with the Olympics too much. I can tell you, speaking the folks that are scheduled to compete, they're very, very concerned. You have some people who believe uh, that it should be pushed back, that it should be postponed a year or two years, uh, simply to make sure to ensure that there are indeed games because you have athletes that have been training for three years, and now that there's been the suspension of things in terms of you know just paying attention, the social distancing, and what have you. You're wondering how the athletes are going to train. You're wondering whether or not they're listening to that advice from health officials who have discouraged uh, social gatherings, obviously. But the Olympic athletes are saying, how are we going to train? How are we going to be ready? What if indeed they decide to continue with the games in the summer and we have not been training and we have not been competing against one another in an effort to elevate our level of play and preparation so we're ready once the games take place? What if we don't do that and then they say, lo and behold, the games are indeed still on? They're and we'll go to Tokyo ill-prepared, and that's not good for anybody. So they're not going to listen to that. These athletes are going to continue to train, come hella high water, by any means necessary, and who knows how uh, that, that may endanger folks. They are aware of that. They feel that the IOC and beyond need to make a step to do something about it. But at this point in time, they're still up in the air as to what may happen. Quick final question. You talk about athletes dealing with this. You're so wired among professional athletes. Generally speaking, what are you hearing as to their coping mechanisms and how they're enduring having to sit out earning their livelihoods? 
Well, it's devastating because they love the game and they desperately, desperately want to play. On the business side, uh, they are also aware that even though they've gotten their checks through, you know, from April 1st, as of April 15th and beyond, uh, their checks might be compromised to some degree because with the leagues and the owners losing money, certainly the play, that means the players are going to lose money as well due to a doomsday provision in the CBA, collective bargaining agreement that was signed. So all of those things are, are being considered. They recognize that, but they also understand the urgency of the moment. They're spending time with their families and loved ones. Uh, they're close-knit in that regard. And so because of it, uh, that's able to d diminish, uh, you know, their, their, their misery to some degree. Uh, but in the end, they desperately want to get back in play. They're praying that the leagues in concert with the federal government, local, local, local and state governments uh, will come together and finally find whether it's a vaccine or some kind of uh, a cure, what have you. You got to remember also that there is the pop the possibility that games could be resumed without fans in attendance that's something uh that's been talked about ad nauseum i know we talked about it on first take on espn yesterday oh uh, i'm of the belief that baseball tennis golf that absolutely positively could be played without fans in attendance okay better and you than still nothing. play those sports. better than it's nothing better than nothing yeah better than nothing